Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's so good to see all of you here this morning as we continue our Easter celebration, remembering what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us, dying on the cross, pay for our sins so that we have that forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And today, as we move through this Easter season, this is the fourth Sunday of Easter, it's also Good Shepherd Sunday. And so we remember our Good Shepherd who willingly laid down his life for his sheep, and we strive to listen to his voice and follow his will for our lives, as we'll hear throughout our readings. A couple of our readings deal with the shepherd, Good Shepherd, and then within the sermon as well. So with that, we follow our order of divine service. is printed out for us. It's also in, uh, on the overhead. And we begin with our opening hymn, O Day of Rest and Gladness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the good shepherd. I know my own. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God. O come, let us worship and bow down. For he is our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. I am my own, and my own will be, and I lay down my life We join in singing our Kyrie and Gloria. Let us pray together. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, comes from the book of Acts chapter 2. 
They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with gladness and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself, into himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. We stand and speak our Alleluia and verse together. Alleluia. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my known know me. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join in singing our creedal hymn.
Please be seated and we join in singing our next hymn, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen Alleluia. Our text for our meditation this morning, going along with our theme of the Good Shepherd Sunday, comes from Psalm 23, a psalm all of you know very well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is our text, dear friends in Christ. I don't know how much you know about sheep, or if you even want to know a lot about sheep. 
One of the big times during the year is shearing time for sheep. It's always met with great, great anticipation, especially by the sheep herders, the sheep farmers, if you will. All the year's work dealing with those sheep come down to just a few very, very long days of shearing. The shearers spend hours upon hours relieving the sheep of a year's growth of their wool that they've accumulated. They appear to be very big and plump on the way to the shed. And some sheep, they're so heavy with the wool that they quickly tire out and they drop down to their bellies if the dogs chase them for just the briefest of moments. In the chutes, they wait their turn. There are usually thousands of sheep, and so speed is very critical. It's been said, professional shearers aren't worth their salt if they can't fleece a sheep in less than five minutes. That's moving right along, isn't it? That's clipping pretty fast. Sheep sit upright against the shearer's leg, and the wool is first started being removed on the stomach area. The animal is then rotated slightly in his legs there, while long strokes remove that wool from the stomach, and they move up to the side, then to the back, and then down on the other side and to the bottom again. A few quick swipes on the legs and the top of the head, And the fleece is all there, it's gathered together in a heap and it's quickly tossed onto a flat where it is um, checked out to be plucked and preened and, and then graded for quality. Shearing is very, very, very hard work that takes skill. It takes speed and it takes endurance. The sheep, which only minutes before appeared to be a very robust and substantial animal as they came into the, in, into the pens and into the chute, they hobble off. Some of them are quite dazed, in fact. There's bleeding going on. There's still a few little patches of wool hanging on them over there. And there might even be some scrapes, bloody scrapes, and maybe even some bright red against the, the white, clean undergrowth that's there from little nicks but they're ready for next year's growth of wool. Only the shearer ends up revealing just how scrawny these sheep look and how helpless these animals really are. They're really pretty small. And relieved of all of their wool, they bound off because they don't have all of that excess weight on them. Our text for today, Psalm 23, about shepherd and sheep might give the impression that that being a Christian is all soft and warm and fuzzy business. After all, if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? I mean, that's what it says. The language of Psalm 23 is a comfort to us, especially in very difficult times that we have to go through and when we have to deal with those difficulties and evil that are out there. It truly is a great comfort to all. When do you find this text most often on people's lips? When do you find it? Funeral, yes. Most oftentimes this funeral or this text is used at death and in funeral services. There isn't a death or funeral that goes by without this text. It appears someplace in all of it that takes place. It appears somewhere in all of that. This psalm has been a source of of strength and comfort for many out there, and I personally use it when I gather the family together before we come in for the funeral service. Just minutes before we all gather to come in, I have this text with them and a prayer with them as we're ready to go in for that service. The Lord, our shepherd, brings us to green pastures and still waters, but, but, when does he do this? Well, think about this as you listen to Psalm 23 and read it. It happens right smack in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death and in the middle of evil and in the middle of enemies. It's always there. It happens right there. That's the way it goes with the Christian life. That's when it comes to be, that he leads us to green pasture and still waters. Are you surprised that it should be this way with Christians? Surprised that the the sheep actually get shorn? We are sheep, aren't we? Are you surprised that you get shorn? Are you surprised that you have to bear crosses in life? Well, you shouldn't be, right? 
Why? Well, because of Christ Jesus himself. And yes, it it gives the impression that everything's gonna be all hunky-dory as you read this, but that's not how it really is and not what it means. We as Christians have to bear crosses in life and we get shorn because Jesus Christ. And as we look at Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God himself, the perfect Lamb of God, guess what? He got shorn. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, we hear in John's Gospel. I've read, I don't know this for a fact, I've read this, that sheep, the closer the sheep get to being shorn or even slaughtered for that fact, the less noise they make. By the time the shearer has them in hand, relieving them of that year's growth of wool, that heavy weight of wool, they are most often completely silent. Very little comes out of their mouths. Do you remember how Jesus reacted with his accusers? We just heard about that back on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. Do you remember how he reacted when he faced his accusers? Do you remember that? For the most part, he was silent. He was silent, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah 53, right? He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was quiet. Jesus silently bore your sins, and he died for those sins on that cross on that Good Friday. He was the great Passover lamb. And through his blood shed on that cross on Calvary, you stand forgiven in the presence of God our Heavenly Father. Once for all, by his own blood shed on that cross, Jesus obtained eternal redemption for us, and God sees us then as righteous because of Jesus' suffering and death on that cross. This wasn't accomplished by any, some other kind of sacrifice, any other kind of sacrifice whatsoever. Only through Jesus, the unblemished lamb of God himself. The bottom line is this, as we look at this text. The shearing is purposeful in life. Jesus' suffering, his shearing, was for a purpose, a very specific purpose, and so is yours and mine. When we do suffer in this life, and we are going to suffer in this life. You know, those sheep are really awful looking once they're done getting shorn. They just don't look right. They look kind of weird. They look just plain bad, if you will. They're kind of scrawny. You know, because you see them with that big coat of fur on and then you take all of that off and it look, they look scrawny and motley and then they're bleeding and their whining starts and, and sometimes they are actually bleeding a little blood from all those nicks that they might get. It's really quite amazing to see them. It's hard to believe that they are the same animal, animal afterwards as they were before. They look so different through the process. Why are they shorn? Well, it's part of the harvest for the shepherd, right? It's how he makes his living. He makes his livelihood by raising sheep um, to eat, but also to get the wool, to sell the wool. And wool is very, very valuable to the shepherd and, and, and the sheep farmer. And we need to know and understand that if they aren't shorn, it's not gonna be good for them. The wool will continue to grow. It will get way bigger. Um, it gets weighted down. Um, as that year goes through, and if it goes over a year, it gets really super heavy, and then the sheep become very susceptible to to disease. Plus, they can't move very well. It's heavy on them. And that fleece becomes filled then with, with dirt and burrs and all other sorts of junk, and infection becomes a real possibility, a real threat and danger for them because that fleece is so thick and heavy upon them. The sheep are extremely vulnerable at this time, too. They can't run. Oftentimes, when you see them brought in, as I said earlier, if one of the dogs chases them just a little bit, they just drop down. They're exhausted because it's so heavy. Yes, the shearing can be painful, but it's very, very necessary for that sheep and the health of the sheep. The shepherd wants the the sheep back out on the range and in good health, growing a nice new valuable wool coat for the next year. 
Good thing the shepherd, he watches over that entire process of shearing the sheep, and he makes sure that they're okay before they all head out. This life that we live in is one big valley of the shadow of death out there for us. Note that Jesus is the one preparing a table. He's preparing a table in the presence of my enemies. That table is recognized for what it is in the face of all of our trials and temptations. Luther puts it this way. <clears throat> if you knew how many fiery darts the devil was shooting at you, you'd run to the sacrament of the altar every chance you got. You wouldn't miss it for anything. There was nothing accidental about Christ's suffering on the cross. It wasn't any man who made it happen. Jesus said to Pilate in John 19, he says this, you have no authority but that given to you from above. And then in John 10, he also says, I laid down my life and I take it up again. The reality is there isn't anything accidental about your suffering that you will go through in this life. Job 13 tells us this, though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. Philip Melanchthon in the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, Article 12, Section 158, writes this. He writes, <clears throat> Scripture explains that Job was not afflicted on account of his past misdeeds, so afflictions are not always punishments or signs of wrath. Indeed, anxious consciences must be taught that afflictions have other more important purposes, lest they think that they are being rejected by God, since in the midst of such afflictions they see nothing but God's punishment and anger. They must consider these other more, in purpose, more important purposes, namely that God performs his alien work in order to do his proper work. And all that means is God is doing something that he, he, he says is good for us and, and to save and in order to save and bless us. That perfect work then, that good and proper work, um, despite thinking that it's beyond different appearances, that alien work, like we think God's punishing us, he's not. He's driving us closer to him. He's using this to be gracious to us and to bless us in so many other ways. There was a tourist, <clears throat> a lady traveling in Jerusalem, and she noticed something unusual about the sheep she was seeing out there. Instead of this group of sheep being led by a shepherd, um, she saw that this group of sheep, they were actually being driven by this man. Some guy was behind this sheep, and, and they were being driven, as she saw, and she watched this taking place. And her curiosity was aroused and piqued, and, and the traveler finally caught the guide's attention and said to the guide, look at that shepherd. He's not leading the sheep, she said. He's pushing them. He's driving them. He's poking at them. He's actually whipping them. I thought a shepherd was supposed to lead his sheep, and they would follow him. You're right, answered the guide. That is what a shepherd does. A shepherd does lead his sheep. But that man, he's not the shepherd. He's actually the butcher. When you're facing the shears in life, know that the good shepherd, he's the one in control of all of that. He's in control of all of it. He's overseeing all of it. And, through God, and though God's purposes are very hidden at some times to us, he is working his will in your life for your own good. And what good is that? Well, he's allowing, causing, bringing, let it happening, the afflictions, to drive you closer to him, to pull you closer to him driving you to hold on to him more tightly, to cling to him more tightly, to cling to his rod and his staff, or as Luther says, cling to his precious word. He does it to drive you to him. As his dear blessed sheep then, find in his precious word the gospel the quiet waters in your baptism, the restoration of your soul in his forgiving word of absolution, a table prepared in the presence of mine enemies, sin, death, and the devil in his blessed sacrament of the altar. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 
And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus, our good shepherd. Amen. We stand for prayers. Blessed Shepherd, you establish your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us within the care of your flock and staff forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty shepherd, you hold in your hands all the might of man, and you hold accountable those who you would govern your people. Grant to us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose, protect your people, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Give them wisdom and moderation in all of their responses to the people. Lord, in your mercy. Loving shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood, and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Inspire and equip your church and her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word, and bless all who serve us on, behalf, on your behalf. Bless us especially when we are persecuted for the faith, or suffer for the sake of the good that honors you and is obedient to your word. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful shepherd, your wounds are our healing and your voice calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve those whom they love and to whom death draws near. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble and hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Be with all who are unemployed and distraught and return health to them and their livelihoods. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen and restore the sinner to repentance. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth or who have been overcome by the temptation of sin. Bring good from ill and increase in all the hunger for your word and a recognition of our need that many may be gathered into your flock when the church doors are opened wide again. Lord, in your mercy. Giving shepherd, you have not withheld anything from us but emptied yourself fully upon the cross that we might be saved. Move our hearts to such devotion and teach us such generosity that we may bring to you the tithes and offering of a grateful heart and serve our neighbor in need with the resources you have supplied to us so abundantly. Lord, in your mercy. Good shepherd, you set your table among us in the presence of our enemies. Hear us because we are beset by so many false voices and tempted by so many false gospels. Help us to hear your voice and to abide safely in your word that remains forever. Equip us with your spirit so that we may receive your true body and blood with faith and repentant heart. Lord, in your mercy. O great good shepherd, we pray you to hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy granting us those things profitable for us and for our salvation, keeping from us all things that are harmful. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I exhort you in Christ that you give attention to the testament of Christ and true faith. And above all, take to heart the words with which Christ presents his body and blood to us for forgiveness. 
that you take note of and give thanks for the boundless love that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood, and that you then externally receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood, as a guarantee and pledge. Let us then in his name, according to his command and his own words, administer and receive the testament. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We join in singing our Sanctus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We join in singing the Agnes Day. Please be seated.
We stand. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting. His peace be with you. Amen. We join in singing our post-communion hymn. We pray. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above that your word may not be bound, but have free course among us and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Good Shepherd. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And our good shepherd continues to walk with us each and every day. And yes, he lets some things come to you, some trials and struggles and shearing to take place because he wants to drive you back to him, to cling to that rod and staff that he has, cling to that comforting word of the gospel. And he promises to take care of you. We have Mr. Drew Urban, principal from Christ Lutheran School, would like to talk to you for a brief 